Hi guys, welcome to today's tutorial. Today we are going to be making this, a bendy wall with particles on it. I've done a couple of versions here. This is my favorite. I love the colors of that. And then one with the logo for you. And then one showing that you can actually bend it any way that you want it. So let's get into it. First thing we need to do is go up to our media pool here, right click and hit do fusion composition just there and we'll call it wall of pink we're going to grab that composition from the media pool and bring it down to our timeline and just drag it out like so then what we're going to do is click on it right click on it and go open in fusion like that so here we are inside the fusion page First thing we need to do is bring in a background node. So I'm going to bring a background node in, connect it across. The reason I do that is because if we click on the background node and go across to the image just here, we can see it's set to 1920 by 1080. And the first node you attach is what the composition size will be. So be careful of that. Okay, so we've got that connected. Let's do this. We're going to bring in a particle emitter, particle directional force, and a particle renderer and we're going to connect those all up together. We're going to take our particle renderer and connect it to our background and it'll automatically create a merge for us. And we're going to drag that up a little bit and across because we're going to be adding a lot of nodes. Right, on the particle emitter, we're currently having our particles emitted from a sphere and we don't want that. So clicking on the particle emitter, go across to the region and we see the sphere here. We need to change that down to line. Now what we can do is go up and take one node here, one of these just over here, like so. And then when we hit play, we get rain coming down our screen. But we don't want that. We want something else. And we're actually going to make it. So we're going to bring in a background node. We're going to go across to the right hand side and change the color to white. We then need to go to the image portion, which is the second one in just here, and we need to turn off auto resolution. We're going to make the width 35 and we're going to make the height 500. So now when I put it in the screen, we get this. We're going to add a mask to that by clicking on it and then clicking the rectangular mask just here. And we're going to go in and just make sure it fits the screen like so. We're then going to go across to the right hand side and where it says soft edge, we're going to crank that up to something like that. Now we can't connect that across to our particle emitter uh, because if I try, it fails. It's not happening. It's not good. The reason for that is we need to click on our particle emitter, come across to the style tab and change it from point to bitmap. When I do that, you'll see that a little yellow triangle will come up just here and that allows us to connect across like so. I'm going to go to the media out to see what the window looks like now. Now when we hit play. A bit too many particles and a bit too fast for my liking. So clicking on the particle emitter, I'm going to come across to the controls and we're going to change it from 10 down to 1. Just so you know, the way the particle emitter works is frame 0, it would emit 10 frames. Frame 1, another 10. Frame 2, another 10. So you very quickly can get too many particles. We're then going to go across to our particle right directional force. And if I come up a little bit, you'll see this little red circle here. And if I change the direction, we can actually change how our particles fall into the scene. We do actually want it on its default minus 90, but we're actually going to slow it, the particles down a bit by just going this way on the strength. And now when I hit play, we get this. Get in there, slowly get in there. Right, now what we need to do is clicking on the particle renderer, we need to hit shift spacebar. And we're looking for something called trails. Let's just add that. We need to come across to the right hand side with the trail selected. We need to pre-roll it 20 frames. We need to take the gain size down a little bit. And then under blur size here, it says lock X and Y. We don't want that. So untick that. And we're actually going to increase the Y. And you'll see why now. Look at that. Very cool, eh? 
Right, let's change our background color. We're going to come across to our background. We're going to come up to the color section, change it from solid color to four corner. And that's a four corner gradient. Now we want one side of the image, let's say the right side, this side to be darker than the other side, and that will give it some depth. So we're going to go to the top right. We're going to choose a blue. We're going to go to the bottom right. Choose a blue, but make it a lot darker somewhere like that. We're going to go to the top left. We'll give it a pinkish hue. Go to the bottom left. Pinkish hue, but a little bit darker. Something like that. And now when we play it back, it's starting to look good. Now what we can do is I'm going to bring our trail node up here. Move those out slightly. Right, on the particle renderer, what we're going to do is we're going to click on it and add a merge. We're then going to select all of these nodes here. We're going to get right click and hit copy. Come down a little bit, right click and hit paste. We're going to take this particle renderer and connect it into the merge like so. Now, when we click on this background and come up, we see it's the white of the previous one. So we're going to change that to a turquoise, something like this. Now, when I hit play, we get that. Now, one of the problems is, is that these are identical emitters. So they're actually emitting in the same place. So we need to change that. And how we do that is click on the particle renderer and then add a transform like that. Clicking on the transform, come up and just move it in which direction you want to move it. So like that. And when we play it back, you can see it's slightly offset. The other thing that we can do and should do actually is click on the particle emitter, come up to here where it says reseed and just click that. And then it will give us a new, uh, new set of values for the uh, particles. We can actually go to this particle set here and I'm going to right click and hit group. Group, 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 where are you? Group, 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 group. Right there. There we are, just to keep everything clean. We're going to select these, right click, copy, right click, paste. We can then go to these, right click and hit group like that. So now we, we're looking a lot more tidier. We're going to go to the ones we've just created here. I'm going to pull those all the way across like this. We need to add another merge after this merge. So click on that merge and then add another merge. So take this, transform, connect it in to that merge like so. Same thing again, clicking on the transform. This time what we're going to do is move it in the opposite direction, somewhere like that. We're then going to go across to the color. I'm going to change that to say a yellow like that. We're going to click on the particle emitter and we're going to change the reseed value as well. And now when we play it back, very cool, eh? We can, we can actually make it a bit cooler. And how we do that is if we go after this trail node just here, click on the trail node, hit shift space bar, and we're looking for a directional blur, which is this one here, and add that. The directional blur is a bit like the particle directional force creates this circle. I can see by just moving this just here, which way the it's going to blur. So we're going to take it down to minus 90 like so. And we're going to blur the crap out of it. Like you've drank 20 whiskies in a row, something like that. Look at that. Very cool. That's the hard part over. So to warp the image, I'm going to click on this merge here. I'm going to hit shift space bar. We're looking for something called a grid warp, which is that one there. I'm going to add that. In the right hand window, we're going to change the grid size because that's too much. I'm going to take the right down to three like that on the X and three like that on the Y. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. I'm going to grab this one, pull it out like that, grab that one, pull it out like that, and then just pull these out a little bit to just to give us that three dimensional look. And when I click on our uh, media out, you can see it's warped the floor. 
To add a bit of believability to that, I also added a fake shadow. And how I did that was I grabbed a background node, put that in, connected it to our grid warp tool, tool, like so. Our entire image goes black. Click on the background node and hit a rectangular mask. Grab that mask. Come on, there we are. And then bring it right down on the sides like that. What you want to do is take it just as, as the image is starting to curve just there. Then come across to the right hand side and take that soft edge right up like that. And that's a bit too dark. So what we're going to do is going to go up to this level just here on the right. I'm going to take that down until we're happy. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click on that rectangle there and we're going to add another rectangle. So come up here and add another one. It does it in a weird way, by the way. It, br it brings it below. You'd think it bring it on top, but it doesn't. So be careful of that. So we're on that rectangle there. We're going to drag that out like that. Do this. Take it to the top. Then what we're going to do is soften the edge like hell. And then bring the level down like so. Just going to change this uh, here. I think that's too much. So we're going to go in there and we're going to change that level down. There we are. Let's see how that looks in the timeline. Right, so it took a couple of minutes to render that. Let's, let's have a look at it. How's that? Pretty cool, eh? If you like what you see, by the way, remember to help me out and uh, go down, hit that like button and subscribe. And if you've got any questions or you want me to do a tutorial on any particular subject, let me know in the comments. I do read them and I will get back to you. See you in the next one.